welcome to Digital Stratosphere, the podcast that provides independent and technology agnostic advice to help organizations through their digital transformation journeys. Regardless of where you are in your digital transformation, whether you're just starting out or in the midst of your journey, this show covers everything you need to know to make your digital transformation successful. My name is Sarah Djokovic and I am your host and thank you so, so much for joining us today. It is common knowledge that there are three pillars to a successful digital transformation. And in today's episode, we are going to cover the people side of digital transformation, otherwise known as organizational change management. Change management is an area that is commonly misunderstood, frequently overlooked, and almost always the root cause of failure. So today, we want to unpack this concept and provide some lessons to digital transformation teams. And joining me for today's discussion is Eric Kimberling, the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting Group, which is an independent and technology agnostic digital transformation consulting firm. Eric and his company have worked with some of the world's leading organizations in their transformation journeys, including helping with the change management components of their transformations. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, to start off, how would you summarize the concept of change management for our listeners? Well, to simplify it or super simplify it, I would say that change management is really any sort of activity or strategy that enables your people, your employees, your team, that enables them to adapt to and be part of the change. And so, in other words, it's what makes the transformation real. Uh, it's not real until your people are actually executing against this new operating model and using your new systems and the new organizational design. It's anything that, that enables people to, to adapt to and become the change. That's great. No, that makes total, total sense. And I feel like when people can be part of it, they kind of feel a little more involved in the whole process too, rather than them kind of being like shuffled around or telling being told what to do kind of thing, which I think is really important yeah. in any kind of industry or business. Now, why is change management? Yeah, no, definitely. So why do you think change management is so important to digital transformation? Well, it's, it's important to any sort of transformation. I mean, any sort of business change, you know, change management is going to be important. But when you talk about technology change, especially when you're talking digital transformation or ERP or CRM, HCM, human capital, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. types of technology you might be deploying in your business, chances are it's going to have a pretty significant impact on your business and, and impact for the better. I mean, it's going to help you be more efficient, more profitable, helps you be more effective in the way you do business. And however, that's all theoretical or philosophical until we actually can achieve that. And the way we achieve it is by having people that can work in this new environment in a way that's actually saving you money and saving time and making you more effective and providing a better customer experience for your customers, all that stuff, all the potential benefits of technology don't become real until we effectively deal with the change management side of things. Got it. Definitely. And with all the change going on in the world, such as like technology and changes, remote teams due to the pandemic and economic turmoil and things like that, are people sort of used to change or in other words, isn't change just like a given in today's world? It's a, that's a great question. And a, and a lot of companies that we talk to will say that they'll make those sorts of comments that, Hey, we're used to change. We, we just had to move to an entirely remote work environment because of COVID or we just, we've been out acquiring companies for the last few years, integrating them into our business or, we're growing very quickly, so our people are used to change. And so on the surface, you think, okay, we're used to change, so it's not going to be hard. But the risk is that, first of all, there's change fatigue. The change fatigue is a very real thing where if all those things that I just mentioned as examples are true to your organization, you're growing, um, you're entering new markets, you're acquiring companies, you're dealing with COVID like everyone else, that is a lot of change. But at some point, people reach a breaking point and they can't handle any more change. And if you go to throw a digital transformation on top of all the changes that people are already experiencing, it can be overwhelming if we don't manage the change well. And more importantly, if we just back up, I mean, we have to make sure that the transformation itself is, even before we think about change management, we have to make sure our transformation strategy and plan makes sense and is realistic and fits the world we're in today. 
but once we've done that, we still have to manage the change and ensure that people understand it and that we're really helping them through the, the entire process. Yeah, that totally makes sense. It's like we live in a world of information as well. So I can totally relate to information fatigue as change fatigue. So <laughs> it's just a lot going on at once. And sometimes, yeah, you just need to kind of draw your line for a second. Um, so if change management is so important to digital transformation success, then why do so many organizations struggle with this concept? Well, I think it's because a lot of organizations don't know what it means. And I, I know your first question is just, you know, how, what is change management? And that answer I gave you may have been a good introduction to what change management is, but it doesn't really tell you what you need to do, or it, it doesn't give you answers as far as how do I manage that change? And so people end up defaulting to the really simple, low hanging fruit, things like uh, training. Uh, I'll, I'll just do end user training on my new technology. I'll train people how to use it. And that'll be my change strategy. Well, if, if you wait until training, it's way too late. I mean, if, if people are going to at some point freak out because their lives are changing and they're going to end up freaking out in the end user training sessions right before you're about to go live. So you need to let people have those freak out moments a lot earlier uh, in the process as early as you possibly can, because you need to work through those freak outs. And that's a very technical term, by the way. So I apologize if uh, <laughs> I'm getting, getting too technical, but uh, it may not be the, the most technical term, but it, every organization has those, those freak out moments. And so we need those people to be able to work through it. And we need to have a clear strategy and plan to migrate you know, people through that, that whole transition. And these are pretty disruptive technologies typically that we're talking about. And so it's, it, mm -hmm. like I said before, has a lot of benefit potential, but it's also highly disruptive to your operations and your people in the meantime. Yeah, totally. So many people think of training and communications when they describe change management. So is that an actual, like an accurate description, would you say? No, there's a, there's a lot more to it. Maybe building on your, your last question a bit, um, there's things that, I mean, certainly, first of all, training and communications are both very important. I don't want to downplay its, the significance, but those are more kind of capstone type activities. In other words, those are things that happen after you've done a bunch of other more fundamental stuff. So things like uh, just defining what your future state organizational structure is going to be you know, how are roles and responsibilities going to look in this new environment? How are the processes going to work? Who's going to do what? All that stuff has to be defined and not just from a pure uh, software technology design perspective, but more from just operationally, how are we going to use this technology? How's it going to fit in our business? And that's one thing that oftentimes gets overlooked because the, the software vendor or the system integrator that's building the software, all they really need to know is just how does the software need to be built? But what we need to know from a change perspective is, we don't really care how the software is going to be built. We care about how it's going to affect people and how it's going to change their jobs and change the processes. So we need to define the difference between point A and point B, where we are today and where we're heading in the future and how it affects different people. So Sarah is going to be much affected, much differently affected than Eric's going to be affected. So we need to figure out a change strategy that allows Sarah to migrate at her pace and it's in a way that's specific to her and I need to have my own change plan or, or approach that's going to help me through my transition because my changes are different than what you're going through. So that sort of getting into and unpacking what the changes are is one of the biggest prerequisites. And then there's also the, you know, actually executing on multiple change strategies, not just training communications, but also having change discussions and uh, you know, workshops with people that involve them in the changes and help them understand the changes all that sort of stuff is important uh, well before training communications happen. Okay, great. Thank you for clearing that up. Now, I wanted to shift gears and talk a little bit about change resistance because I know um, that you and the rest of the third stage team commonly work with clients that think that people are going to embrace change only to find out that later they are resisting it. So can you explain this dynamic to us? Yeah. So. I mean, that's a very common dynamic that you mentioned where, where companies will say, you know, our people are used to change, like I was saying before, or they're ready for the change. They, they're tired of their old systems. They know these processes are broken. They know these technologies are outdated. So they're ready for us to implement new technology. And I have no doubt that that's true for most organizations and most employees. And, and I think the, the first thing and the most important thing to recognize about resistance to change is that most of resistance doesn't come from a bad place. It doesn't come from uh, a desire to sabotage the company or sabotage the project or uh, a desire just to resist change to be difficult or whatever. I mean, usually people are on board with the change, but the problem is 
when you start messing with people's lives and you start taking away job responsibilities because now it's going to be automated in the technology or you start moving roles and responsibilities around or you take away that spreadsheet that I created 20 years ago to help manage the business and I take pride in being able to manage the business using the spreadsheet and only I can use the spreadsheet to manage the business. Now all of a sudden you're taking that away from me and you're saying anyone could do this with the new technology. I'm going to feel threatened by that and I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. I'm not trying to be malicious or ill-willed but as an employee, I'm going to naturally resist that. And it's very understandable because we're, we're human. So we have to figure out how do we, how do we help people understand that there is going to be resistance? It's not a matter of if it's how much resistance is there going to be? How severe is it? Where is it going to come from? Certain parts of your company are going to be more or less resistant than others. And what am I, most importantly, what am I going to do about it? How am I going to mitigate those risks and how am I going to help people through the, through the change and help them overcome that resistance? Yeah, no, it's so true. And like you, you bring up a point where it's like, obviously the change is trying to be implemented to improve, you know, the process and the systems and everything that you have going on. But again, at the end of the day, when you're dealing with humans, humans are very ego driven as well. So that's another thing that you have to deal with, especially when you're saying, you know, you might be taking someone's job completely away or the person that could only do that one thing. And now anybody can do it. And yeah, that is a threat to a lot of people. And at the end of the day, I think it's very important on how you treat the people that do work within the companies to to be able to help them embrace the change rather than resist it. So Yeah, it's also a it's also a cultural thing too. I mean you're you're kinda of hitting on a another point, which is every company has their own unique culture and every company's trying to maybe bend their culture or tweak their culture a bit. And the way we manage change, manage people during a transformation is going to it's that that should reflect our culture and what we want to be. And a lot of times companies take pride, for example, in having, you know, a very employee centric model or, or being a great place to work, but then they go through these transformations and they totally skimp on the change management activities. And, it, and, it, and it's in conflict with that culture that you spent all this time creating and a culture that might be a competitive advantage for you. Now all of a sudden you're undermining it because you're not managing change the way that people are used to you doing it or would expect you to do it in that, in that type of environment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it does sound like a pretty complex topic. You're dealing with a lot of different issues at once, I guess. And I can see why change management would be so important to a transformation. Um, but when we come back from a real quick break, I'm going to ask Eric how to get started with a change management initiative. And we'll be basically right back with more of the Digital Strategy podcast. <music> Welcome back to the Digital Stratosphere podcast. I'm Sarah Dokovic and I'm speaking with Eric Kimberling from Third Stage Consulting about organizational change management during digital transformations. So now before the break, we we're talking about why change management is so important. And now what are some of the most important components of an effective change management strategy? Well, in no particular order, maybe semi-sequential order, I would say that the first thing is an organizational assessment and really starting to quantify and define what your potential sources of resistance are going to be. And again, I, like I mentioned before the break, it's not a matter of if there's going to be resistance, it's a matter of how much resistance and what's the root cause of it and how do we tackle the resistance. So with an organizational assessment, the goal is to understand and define what the potential sources of resistance are going to be before they ever become problems so that we can mitigate them from the start and not have to worry about fixing it later on. And, you know, change management is so often what derails a implementation or causes time delays and just things to go off, off track. And so we really need to get ahead of it as much as we can and really define uh, what the organizational assessment is as a starting point, which then, by the way, leads to a change strategy that's more specific to you and your organization and your culture and what you're trying to accomplish. A couple of the other things that are maybe the low hanging fruit, the really big buckets of important change activities. Another one is organizational design. That's a that's an area that a lot of companies don't really think about is, is defining what the, what the organization is going to look like. Are you going to have a, you know, a shared service model where you're consolidating all your procurement functions into one department now and you're going to centralize that and you have common processes for your procurement process? If so, what's that going to look like? How are people going to do their jobs? What are their roles and responsibilities going to be? And ultimately, how are their jobs going to be affected so that we can start 
enabling some of those changes and start to roll out some of those changes rather than just waiting until we go live with new new technology. So that's that's another one. Um, I'd say obviously, you know, training, communications that we talked about, those are important uh, factors and functions. And then another one that's, that's really important that a lot of times people don't equate to change management is this whole concept of benefits realization. So mm. how do we actually achieve the benefits we expected to get? So when we define what we thought we wanted technology to do for us, how do we ensure that we are enabling people to actually help accomplish that? And so really focusing your change efforts on measurable improvements to the business is a way to take something that's often viewed as a sort of a touchy feely, nice to have activity and it, and it turns it into something more tangible and pragmatic and measurable. Okay, got it, awesome. And how should these change management work streams fit into the overall project, would you say? Well, there's a couple different ways. I mean, first of all, I'd say that as a general rule of thumb, change management should be incorporated into your overall project plan. It should be part of your overall transformation strategy. It shouldn't be a standalone strategy that you just do in parallel. It should be part of a bigger, bigger plan. And so that's the, the one commonality. But beyond that, I mean, there's a number of ways you could structure it. A lot of times companies will have a separate change management team where all that team is doing is helping manage the change. Um, I personally like the approach better where you, you embed change management into everything that other people are doing. So for example, if you're a business process lead on a, on a um, transformation, your, your focus and your number one priority might be defining what your future state processes are gonna be. But another really important role that those people should be playing is how do I identify what the impacts to, to the people are gonna be and how we can enable those changes and really bake the change management stuff into the day-to-day -day activities of the project. I like that approach better. It doesn't always work because a lot of times people don't have time along with their other responsibilities to do the change stuff. And a lot of times the change stuff will fall off the radar if, if, if they don't have the time. So that's where a dedicated change team can help. But the problem with the dedicated change team is that oftentimes the change management stuff gets disconnected and siloed from the process and the technology stuff that's happening and, it, and it's it's not aligned oftentimes so you know in a perfect mm -hmm. world i'd say embed it as part of the overall project team responsibility but if necessary you can also have a separate change team as well yeah that's really informative i appreciate that because yeah like you said it, in an ideal world it would be nice to have it all kind of in synchronicity and you know connected but can't always be like that. So I wanted to ask, what are some of the prerequisites that need to be in place before a team can be effective in their change efforts? Well, the, the first thing is that there has to be a clear definition of what the future state operating model is going to look like, what your future state business processes are going to be, because really that's the foundation for everything else and anything change related. It all ties back to how, you know, what the changes are and what that gap analysis is between the way things are today and the way things are going to look in the future so that we can roll by roll and department by department look at how are different people affected differently by those changes. So having a clear definition of the business process model and the business processes is one prerequisite. And then the second one that it, we talked about before, uh, but needs to be done before you really get too far into your change efforts is just the organizational design. What are roles and responsibilities going to look like in this new world? And again, it's not just about how technology is going to be used. It's about who's going to be doing what and what responsibilities are they going to have in this new, new world. Awesome. Yeah, totally. And what should a digital transformation change management team look like? So what type of team and people should focus on the change management? Well, we talked about how it should be structured um, a couple questions ago, but as far as the types of people you want on the change team. Ideally, you want people that understand change management and understand um, the, the need and importance and priority of change management, but also understand hands-on how the business works and they understand the operations of, of, your, of your business. And I'd say that's probably one of the biggest challenges with change management practitioners in general, is that they might be really good at the change side of things, the soft side of change, but they're not always good at and they're oftentimes not good at understanding just how supply chains work or how financial and accounting operations work and you kind of have to understand that stuff to be able to really be effective at, at change management so ideally you want people that can understand the softer side of change but they understand the more tangible pragmatic side of your your operations and then 
you know, there's, there's also certifications and training out there for change practitioners. If you're an operations person, for example, that doesn't have that soft skill set, I think it's a lot easier to go get that soft skill set than it is to try and teach someone with the soft skill set to teach them about business and operations and things like that. So um, you can get pro size certification, for example, or um, I think Change Management is, Institute is another organization that does certifications and training for change management. We provide a lot of uh, YouTube videos and training resources on our website for, for change management. So there's a lot of resources out there that you can, you can get to, to pick up the skills you need. Yeah, that's really helpful. It's just to be able to know a bit from both sides so then that way you can really hone in on kind of getting very clear and helpful with the outcome. So yeah. what would you say to executives that think change management is a touchy-feely thing or something that's just a nice to have? What are your thoughts? Well, I, I'd say the number one thing or takeaway I'd leave with someone who's thinking that or, or asking the question is, I've yet to meet an executive team or a program manager, program manager or CIO or CFO that's been involved in a transformation that has said that they regretted spending too much time and money on change management. Uh, I've yet to meet that person that even thinks that they've spent enough time on change management. Most of the time, even with our own clients, they, they wish they would have spent even more time than they did on focusing on, on change management. So I guess that would be the big takeaway is just, you know, look at, history and look at why so many projects fail. And the reason so many projects fail isn't because of the technology. Typically, it's usually because we haven't managed the, the organizational change management side of things well. Yeah, you bring up a really good point there. And what are some of the ways that organizations can get started with their change management initiatives? Well, I'd say that the first thing is that that organizational assessment I was talking about before, if, if you can start off by assessing from a quantitative perspective and a qualitative perspective, what is the lay of the land? What, where are those organizational pitfalls and likely sources of resistance? And most importantly, how can we use that to inform a more effective change strategy? That's, that's an important first step because the change management world tends to believe in, oftentimes believe in kind of one size fits all answers or silver, silver bullets. And the reality is they don't exist. There is no one size fits all answer. And we need to be a lot more surgical and focused in how we manage change that's specific to you as an organization and how, how the um, business processes are going to be changing and how the, the organization is going to be affected. So that organizational assessment up front is important. And generally when we do an organizational assessment, it's two prongs. One is the kind of an anonymous online survey that's meant to capture qual or quantitative data around the culture of the organization and, and starting to quantify some of the things that oftentimes could lead to failure or to change management risk. And then there's the more qualitative analysis too that we do via focus groups just to get a better understanding of uh, some of the, the softer side of change around the culture of the organization and communication styles and things that are very much related to how, how change needs to be managed within a transformation. Awesome, totally makes sense. I love that, thank you. Um, now, if our listeners want to learn more, what are some resources that you might suggest for them as they evaluate their potential digital transformation options? Well, I'd say there's a, there's a couple things. I mean, our, our website is a good place to start. There's a lot of good content out there with downloads and videos and um, white papers and reports and other best practices. Um, and you can go to our website at third stage, which is all one word, thirdstage-consulting.com. And then of course, subscribe to this podcast would be another uh, recommendation to get updated every week and get more best practices and educate yourself. And then if you search for third stage and or my name individually on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of videos and uh, YouTube channels that we, we put additional content out there as well. Amazing. I love that. Well, Eric, we're about out of time, but thank you so much for all of your knowledge and for your time today. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Of course. And thank you all for listening. Again, my name is Sarah Dogovich and we'll see you next time in our next episode of the Digital Stratosphere podcast. <laughs> <laughs>